Hi everybody, I hope you're well. Today we'll read from a book titled Chizu, Maquette Edition by Kikuji Kavada, published by Mac. Joshua Chuhan wrote, In 2005, intrigued by a publisher's listing, I paid a tidy sum to order, sight unseen, a new facsimile of a book I had only read about in various anthologies. Kikuji Kavada's Chizu the map was, the description claimed, the ultimate photo book as object, one of the most famous and sought-after photographic publications in existence. Of all the great photo books made in response to the terrible aftermath of the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki that led to the end of World War II, Chizo was said to be the most enduringly complex and mysterious. I was building my personal library, and, even as a copy of a copy, it seemed uh, an important thing to have. Though I thought I'd known what to expect, the object I received a few weeks later surprised me. Out of a slipcase lid, a compact volume that, once opened, plunged me into a personal macrocosm of high contrast, neatly abstract imagery. Here, delivered through a succession of double gatefolds, were desperate scenes of a world thrown into chaos. Surfaces covered with a gruesome crust, graffitied bunkers irradiated by a stark light, coiled ribbons of scrap, metal and glass encased artifacts, fused bottle caps and trampled flags, a cigarette carton and a wig-like clump of hair, televisions, wanted posters, a graphic world of signs and symbols, only one of the pictures depicted an actual map. I hadn't seen anything like it. It made me wonder what kind of power the original gravure printed edition must possess, but given its extreme scarcity I was resigned to let my curiosity remain just that. I didn't know anyone who owned one, and of the original run of 700, about a third were lost in a fire during the Todai riots of 1968-69. More than a decade later, I had the opportunity to find out firsthand at the New York Public Library whose art division I'd been asked to lead. Not only does the library hold the iconic first edition of Chizu, designed by Kohei Sugiura and issued on August 6, 1965, by Bijutsu Shupansha, it also has in its Spencer collection an item of even greater rarity, Kikuji Kavada's unique handmade maquette. Acquired in November 2001 through the pioneering dealer Andrew Roth, the maquette presents a notably different physicality than that of the published edition. Contained in the white slip-cased ink-edged object are many of the same pictures, but with variant croppings, tonalities and orientations, and in the markedly dissimilar configuration of a pair of jacketed volumes, each nearly twice as large in format as the published book, separated by a black and white divider. Its pages are made of thin, silvery, dark room prints, uh, folded in half and pasted back to back. There are no folios to unfold, only a progression of intense, full bleed images, the scorched interiors of the Hiroshima Prefecture Industrial Promotion Hall, later known as the Genbaku or Atomic Bomb Dome, uh, gathered in one volume, the byproducts of post war Japan in the other. I was struck by the force of the maquette. As an object, it is highly finished and self-assured, exhibiting none of the pentimenti or other such residues of deliberation that book dummies often reveal. Like the version ultimately produced, its pages bear no text, except for that which appears in the pictures themselves. Incised into walls, printed on labels and packaging, inscribed in farewell letters by kamikaze pilots. 
Notably, one of the volumes features 11 blank spreads, uh, arithmically interspersed between double pages of scarified walls. Their amplified presence in the maquette reminded me of particular works by New York school painters such as Alfred Gottlieb, who wrote two years after the end of World War II, different times require different images. To my mind, certain so-called abstraction is not abstraction at all. On the contrary, it is the realism of our time. Were these stark white pages meant to provide relief, however temporary, from these relentless scenes of ash? Could they have stood for the blinding flash of the atomic bomb? If so, I thought, what a radical gesture of conceptual design. Having grown accustomed to the disorienting experience of opening and closing the delicate gatefolds of the published edition of Chizu, the more austere ritual of paging through one volume of the maquette, then the other, then back again, was layered and circular in a manner that stayed with me. Cavada recalled that Kohei Sugiura recognized that my work consists of two parts. One comprises actual objects, the other transcends the objects, they are abstractions. Finally, we decided simply to make two books. I liked the idea of two volumes, but wondered whether the reader would be able to retain the images from one book to the next and see them as a double image, to know that the meanings must be combined to form a whole. Yet, at the same time, I was attracted to the concept because I had never seen a photography book in two volumes. Apparently, Cavada was not alone in this doubt, which led him and Sugiura to overhaul the design of the book, integrating most of the contents of the two parts while also reducing its overall size in order to make it more economically viable to produce, although that did not end up being the case. A unique feature of this new solution was the gatefolds that resembled the hinged doors of a Batsudan altar or shrine that open outwards, revealing a sacred scroll, image or statue of Buddha within. Going further back, the story of the origin and development of Chizu, as chronicled in various published recordings by Kavada over the years, goes like this. In July 1958, following the release of Ken Domon's uh, controversial Hiroshima, Kenkosha 1958, one of the first major Japanese photography books to address the legacy of the atomic bomb, Kavada, born 1933, accompanies Domon to Hiroshima to photograph the elder photographer's first return trip to the city for a feature that would appear in Shukan Shinko the next month. During their four days together, Cavada quietly slips away to explore by himself the desolate ruins of the Genbaku Dome, venturing into a dark, cavernous room where he experiences the shocking presence of an audible violent whirlpool covering its ceilings and walls. In 1961, Cavada returns uh, of his own accord with both a 4x5-inch view camera and two 35mm cameras, using a tripod with uh, the former to record the long exposures of the dome's interior surfaces with existing light. Over the next uh, couple of years, at various sites in and around Hiroshima, the Peace Memorial Museum, the Naval History Museum in Itajima, and Tokyo, ironworks factories, defunct military structures in Futsu, the Yasukuni Shrine, he develops the other motifs that would eventually fill out his project. Kavada first exhibited images under the title Shizu in November 1961 at the Fuji Photo Salon in Ginza, Tokyo. During the exhibition's week-long run, he showed 86 oversized enlargements installed cheek by jowl in three parts, depicting a. military strongholds, b. the structure and surface of the Genbaku Dome, and c. the urban detritus and contemporary symbols of economic growth. 
The magazine and newspaper publication of individual images soon followed, beginning with the appearance of a single image from Hiroshima in the January 1962 issue of Azai Camera. It was around this time that Kavada began working with uh, Sugiura to conceptualize Shizu as a book. Kavada's choice of Sugiura as collaborator was as savvy as it was inspired. Already established by the late 1950s as one of the leading graphic designers of his generation through his avant-garde magazine work, Sugiura first uh, forayed into photobook design with Hiroshima Nagasaki Document 1961, published by the Japan Council Against Atomic and Hydrogen Bombs and featuring work by Shomei Tomatsu and Ken Domon. By the time Kavada approached uh, Sugiura, the sought-after designer was already working with uh, Eikon Hozoe, a fellow former Vivo member, on what would be published in 1963 as Barakei, Killed by Roses. An influential and formidable creative force in his own right, Sugiura would go on to design several other key Japanese photo books following his collaboration with Kavada including Iko Narahara's Europe Where Time Has Stopped, Robert Frank's The Lines of My Hand and Flower Is, Yutaka Takanashi's Toshie Towards the City, and Yun Morinaga's Kawa Ruiei River, Its Shadows of Shadows. The elaborate and innovative production finally settled on by Kavada, Sugiura and the package designer Toshiro Yoshio is indisputably a master stroke of design and execution, with its distinctive die-cut chemise imprinted with the title in multiple languages, a nautical map of unspecified islands and a list of associative words, numbers and phrases, many referring to the war an atomic bomb. Its sepia-toned jacket showing some of the same words aflame and with captions cleverly hidden on its verso, and the inclusion of a poetic text by Kenzaburo Oe on a folded tan paper insert. Yet contradictions and questions pertaining to the project's long gestation abound, and the stubborn fact and potential of the maquette remain. Cavada signed the maquette using Roman script rather than kanji and dated it 1965, the year of Chizu's publication, a surprising gesture given how extensively the project was modified between the maquette and its final published form. Fifteen years after Chizu's release, Cavada expressed a degree of ambivalence about the version of the book that became his calling card writing in 1980 that he couldn't bear to look at it, and registering, almost as an afterthought, a preference for the two-volume concept that had been abandoned, his Siamese twins, as he has sometimes referred to them. Elsewhere, he remembered that the trajectory of Chizu had been suddenly altered by the death in a plane crash of the publisher who had made a commitment to the two-volume concept that his successor could not uphold. In addition, as noted by the scholar Roger Keyes, Cavada had intended to commission his contemporary Hiroshi Iwata to write poems that would appear in the blank pages of the first volume. What became of this idea, and how did text came to be excluded from its pages entirely? And what if Cavada had managed to issue the book as he and Sugiura had originally envisioned? This publication probes these questions and raises others by making available in facsimile form a tantalizing alternate conception of one of the greatest photo books ever made, revealing both uh, the freedom and boldness with which Cavada forged his independent vision and the extent of Kohei Sugiura's role in shaping not only the form of Chizu, but also its content. What does this nearly six-decade-old artifact say today, given that their initial idea was superseded and never brought completely to fruition? That is a question we leave for you, the reader, to consider. In laying out the photographer's own evolution and reconstructing a comprehensive set of data points surrounding his uh, seminal project, the aim of what follows is to deepen our knowledge and appreciation of the legendary book that Kikuji Kavada 
now 88, still considers to be an object headed towards the future. Ask for the book at your local bookstore. Thank you for joining me today and see you in the next video.